So you mentioned when we eat more, we possibly have more activity. Uh, we have more energy to move more, right? So here's my next question. Does uh, carbs versus protein versus fat affect how we also achieve weight loss, how it kind of digests in our body and turns into energy? Absolutely, it does, yes. Okay, so if you look at any nutrition label on any food stuff, what it will say is it will say, this is how much protein's in here, this is how much carbohydrates in here, this is how much fat's in here, and it'll give you an energy probably in K calories, sometimes in kilojoules, but it, they're just different means of, of describing the same thing. And what you'll find is for every gram of fat, it'll say 9 K calories of energy is in that fat. For every gram of carbohydrate, there are 4 K calories of energy, and for every gram of protein, the same 4 K calories of energy, so-called, is contained in that. Mm. Problem, however, how did they work that out? How did they determine that? Well, what they did is they took a small sample of that given food that they've tested, and they put it inside a thing called a bomb calorimeter, mm. which is a, a, a closed thermodynamic system, wherein there is an inner chamber where the combustion takes place. There's an outer chamber containing a bath of water, which is, starts at 20 degrees C. Then they, what they do is they rapidly and completely combust that food in a flame, basically to ash, with the outputs being carbon dioxide and water and heat. And then they measure how much the bath around the combustion has heated up. And they say that's how much energy is in the food. So several, several issues with that. Number one, that's not what your body does with food. It does not put it in a flame and rapidly combust it to form carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Yes. What it does is it takes reducing equivalents in the form of hydrogen atoms off the car carbon skeletons, and it goes through a long convoluted process where there is energy collected at various different stages. It goes through the mitochondria, you produce ATP. Um, so, so, so a lot of that energy is, is encapsulated in a chemical form, and then there's an insensible loss as heat as well. That's the actual calories part that would be you know, appropriate for what a human does with it. So it's just not an accurate measurement of what your body does with food. Also, it assumes that a food is going to be oxidized for energy, which is true in the case of carbohydrates and fats, but not true in the case of proteins. Proteins are incorporated into your body structures. They are in your hair, they are in your uh, muscles, they are in your blood, they're everywhere. You know, you, you're basically 65% of your dry weight is protein. And that's because you are absorbing that protein into your body structures. You're not burning that for energy. So in effect, it does not contain four kilocalories of energy at all, does it? Mm. It's, it's fundamentally a ridiculous idea that that would be the case. <laughs> To that, usually people will say, oh, thermodynamics, though, it's all equivalent, the heat equivalence principle and all that, the first law of thermodynamics, what are you talking about? <laughs> How can you possibly be a professor and say such things? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the answer. The first law of thermodynamics, in fact, all the laws of thermodynamics, not even just the first one, they all rely entirely on an assumption that we are dealing with a thermodynamically isolated system. The math only works in that case. Anytime you step outside a thermodynamically isolated system, errors start creeping in because of the lack of thermodynamic isolation. Uh, unfortunately, thermodynamic uh, isolated systems do not exist anywhere in the universe. The whole idea of thermodynamics is theoretical. It was actually designed in the first instance to talk about the interconvertibility between heat and motion, mm -hmm. thermodynamics, mm -hmm. not thermochemical dynamics. You're a chemical engine, you're not a thermal engine. So it's not even, it's just totally inappropriate to apply thermodynamics. There are only closed and open thermodynamic systems in the universe as we know it. A closed system would be like a bomb calorimeter. Mm -hmm. An open system would be like a human body a human body is able to exchange both heat and matter in and out of the system, thereby throwing thermodynamics completely out the window. So as soon as someone says thermodynamics, though, on the calories in, calories out argument, you know they are ignorant of thermodynamics and the laws of thermodynamics, and you know you can ignore them as a pseudoscientist. Wow. Despite which they will, they will say, oh, it's an, it's an irrefutable law of the universe, you clown, is what they'll say to you. No, you're the clown.
because you don't understand thermodynamics. Sorry, long answer, but there you go. I love it. Let's talk.